stories that are untold, underreported, and all out inspirational. Carrie Pena reports. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Carrie Pena Reports on iTunes and Stitcher and for watching our live stream. You can always check us out on Facebook at Carrie Pena and connect with us on our site, inspiredmedia360.com. Of course, be sure to subscribe so you get all of our interviews and content that we push out every week. Today we are talking about how to toughen up mind, body, and spirit. I want to welcome Jesse Holland, a coach who specializes in functional Functional fitness. Functional I should fitness. say that right. Yes. Feng shui. You do that on the side? A um, little bit of everything? Sometimes on Saturdays. On Saturdays. Um, and you're also a guide for K2 Adventure Travel. And we also have Luke Kayem, who is a master lifestyle coach and an interior designer as well. No, you can leave that to your talented uh, gra- gra- wife. Graphic designer. Graphic, graphic designer. designer. Um, you are a health and fitness expert. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. So um, both of you guys are going to share with the audience some of your top diet and wellness tips. And Luke, you said uh, in an email to me something very interesting about three questions that you always ask all of your clients before you can help them move forward. So we're going to be talking about those things uh, in just a moment. But first, I want to talk about this, uh, this t- world's toughest mutter that you guys just completed. What is that? Yeah, so uh, World's Toughest Mudder might be the hardest, most challenging race on the planet. And it is a 24-hour obstacle course race that involves over 20 obstacles, a five-mile course in and out of Lake Las Vegas in Henderson, right outside of Las Vegas. And and Jesse and I had the opportunity to do this for the second year in a row. Uh, Last year, we we hit just about 40 miles, and and this year, we hit 50. So myself, Jesse, and a couple other guys in the Fittest Tribe Alive set up, and uh, we we, we conquered. And it doesn't just happen overnight. It happens over the course of 24 hours, from start to finish, 12 o'clock on Saturday to 12 o'clock on Sunday. Now, Jess, I saw some video that you posted. um, And boy, you had the Michael Jackson dance coming to the finish line because uh, it's, you're pretty spent by the time you get there. Psychologically, what is this like? Uh, mental grit. It's uh, powering through, uh, finding what's within, and uh, for me, most importantly, getting out of body. A lot of that has to do with meditation uh, that I practice on a daily basis, but being able to remove mind from body and know what the task is. Um, overall, that's what got me through the finish line, and that video was on the 24th hour. I came across at 24 hours and three minutes, so um, a long day for me. Luke, is, is part of what you try to teach people, um, now not everyone is going to get involved with the toughest mutter, because that is extreme, right? And you have to be prepared for something like that. But is part of what you try to teach your clients is to really learn how to push yourself and do things that maybe you didn't think were possible. Yeah, we live in a very comfortable world, and and myself included. I I teach these same lessons to my kids that I teach to my clients, and it's really our, you know, we're we're blessed. We have opportunity. We have comfort. You know, yesterday uh, we had... uh, uh, organic salmon and uh, uh, sweet potatoes and those opportunities come to us quite easily for the simple fact that we do have these opportunities well if we don't get uncomfortable sometimes in our day to day, then when things do get uncomfortable, we don't know how to survive. We don't know how to handle those things. Take it for example, you lose your job, you get a flat tire, someone in your family dies. And if you don't mentally push yourself throughout the year, throughout the days, throughout 24 hours, then when those uncomfortable situations happen, how can you handle them? Do you just break down or are you able to succeed because of the training that you did? So those are the things that I try to get my clients to understand is like, you live in a big house, you drive a big car, life is pretty good for you. Let's get you a little uncomfortable so that when the real uncomfortable happens, you're ready. I want you to take me inside, going back to the Tough mutter for a second, I want you to take me inside and paint a picture of what it's like to see people actually, that moment of accomplishment, and not everyone is, you know, uh, someone like yourself, you, you know, you, you have this incredible physicality, and you work out all the time, but not everyone involved in the Tough mutter is, and, sure. and so they, w- they would just went for it, so kind of paint a picture of what that's like to see that accomplishment. Sh- sure, so uh, for myself, and I'm sure Jesse's right there with me, um, you know, we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for our clients. We do it for our friends. We do it for our family. We, we truly live with purpose 
through empowering other people. So I'm going to use somebody else on our team as the example, and his name is Robert Scoville, 57 years old. 56. 57. He completed 24 (laughs) hours. I celebrated his birthday with him in the middle of the night in the water. Uh, Uh, He completed this 24-hour obstacle course at 57 years old, and he did it with a fractured foot. We were training, and he was at a a peak and a prime, and and about two and a half weeks ago, he rolled his ankle one morning training, and we're talking about training in wetsuits in in North Scottsdale through neighborhoods at 5.30 in the morning, and he rolled his ankle. He, he, He didn't have a light on, and he wasn't paying attention. Well, he could have easily given up. He could have easily quit. And uh, he decided to actually compete in the event. So not only did he show up, but he completed 24 hours. He didn't hit the 50 that he wanted to, but he hit 30 miles. So for me, it's seeing his face. It's it's seeing him cross that finish line. It's looking back and seeing the photos of, of myself and Jesse and some of our teammates that truly inspires me to continue and then see what else is out there. You know, what is our next adventure? Where are we going next? What's our next experience that we're going to be able to do together? You know, uh, I interviewed this incredible guy, Derek Weider, who is a veteran who served three tours of duty in Iraq. He lost his leg. And he told me this story about how when he returned from his third tour after losing his leg, um, he, he lost his military career as well because he had to be medically retired. And he went back to San Diego and he told me this story about how he was in such a deep depression because it was all he knew, you know. And he saw on Facebook, one of his buddies was doing a uh, Tough mutter, And he said, at that moment, I realized, get in or get out. And I, that, it was such a profound interview when he said that something resonated. And so he pushed himself. Now he's one of he's the top athletes. I mean, he's r- with Rush in. Club. Yeah. And you work with Rush Club as well, Jess. Um, and now he's this unbelievable athlete who inspires millions yeah. of people. Yeah. So let me ask you guys this. How do we take what you're saying today and apply some of these lessons to everyday life? Because it strikes me um, that you don't have to wait for January 1st. It's a new year. I'm going to turn over all these new leaves. How do we do this today? Motivate ourselves to be stronger, tougher, you know, and just really overall live a better life. Really having somebody hold you to extreme accountability. And that can be, you know, look, not everyone can afford to hire a coach, but that can be getting a friend who maybe you say, look, I need some help holding myself accountable. Right? I no, mean, certainly. you just have someone kind of a checks An and accountability balances. Partner. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Self accountability is really important, which is why we say, hey, find a target, find an event, find some kind of experience with a deadline and a timeline on it. And then you work backwards. So I know a lot of people were inspired by uh, Jesse, you know, completing World's Toughest Mutter. So we're letting those people know now, well, you have 12 months. So let's let's work backwards now. So all the decisions that you make, all the choices, all the options that you have, well, you know that there's a target and a goal at the end of the year next year to really stay and get in some of the best shape of your life and not just physically, but mentally as well. And, you know, I want to get to your three questions that you apply to your clients in just a second. But first, Jesse, if you could just quickly tell people a little bit about the injury that you came back from, because this is pretty significant, your journey. You, you gained a lot of weight. And you really got to a point that was pretty low in your life, and you've worked hard to get to where you are today. Yeah, um, I'll, as quickly as I can, I had a, a incurred a severe back injury seven years ago. It was debilitating. I was at the darkest point, moment of my life. Um, I was in a recovery process for 11 and a half months. Uh, I made the decision that I wanted to not be lying on the ground the rest of my life and started making small, tiny adjustments moving forward in a healthy fashion. How scared were you, though, when you were lying on the ground? You're a young man. You'd always been you I know, thought, active. and I, I thought I was going to be like that the rest of my life. Um, it did not seem... I did not see a light at the end of the tunnel during those 11 and a half months. And it was... Um, I'm a, a positive person. Uh, you know me. And um, during those 11 months, every day was dark for me. It was it was a challenge to think that I was going to have to go through life dealing with physical pain. And every time I said hello to somebody, it was with a wince because I was in some sort of a, a pain environment. Um, coming back from that, it was a little by little working my way out of that dark space into a positive area. And um, Luke has been my mentor for five years. I was uh, introduced to him through a great childhood friend, Noah, uh, his best friend growing up, who's a good college friend of mine. And um, Luke has brought me under his wing very early on in my recovery process. And it's uh, changed my life in a 180 degree direction. And 
and if I understand the story correctly, Luke introduced you to functional fitness. And, and so for our listeners and viewers, Luke, what is functional fitness? Yeah, functional fitness is fitness that your body is meant to do naturally. So you bend over at the waist to tie your shoes, you bend over uh, and pick something up and take it up over your head, you squat, you stand, you walk, you run. So not using any kind of equipment or machines, using your body weight as a machine. So what do you want people to take away when they hear Jesse's story? Because I'm sure that resonates with a lot of people who are either going through something physically or mentally that blocks us. And you get to that point and it makes me so sad to see people who are in this dark place and who don't see a light at the end of the tunnel like you were saying, Jess, because life is a beautiful thing and I think it's a gift. What do you say to people, much like what you said to Jesse when you were helping him? Yeah, so it, maybe not as much uh, of what I say or uh, more about what I do. And, and I'm a big believer in don't just tell them, but show them. So all of these experiences and these races and these events, although I'm the one signing up for them, I bring people along with me. So I know Jesse, as an empowerment coach, does the same thing. He wants to bring as many people along with him. So I'm not going to have somebody sign up for an event or an experience or say, hey, come with me to Africa, unless I'm going to be right there beside him. And that's the biggest thing. Like you said, finding somebody, a friend, a coach, a colleague, you know, now with corporate wellness, you're getting entire businesses that are working together to, to uplift everybody get people up out of their desk away from their phones that's a pretty great thing isn't it it's amazing it's very powerful you know um, let's talk about your three questions uh, you you wrote these to me and I thought they were really on point that you apply to your clients and you say before they can make progress you want to know the answers to these who will be affected by you making these choices what will be your greatest challenge and why is making this change important to you and then what? Yeah, well, everybody wants to lose weight. I mean, that's usually the the stepping stone. Everybody wants to eat better. Okay, we've just stepped up on another platform. But if we don't dig into truly why, who, what, and why we're doing these things, then they're just going to continue. So I'll use myself as the example here because I, I truly feel that I, I am also blessed and, and I look at life every single day as a positive thing. For me, I had a, I had a tough childhood. So because of that tough childhood, I've decided to make my primary focus and my passion towards raising children and empowering other fathers to become better fathers. So we all need to become better. So the who, what, why is truly what's going to drive us forward, right? For Jesse, for somebody who's coming off of an injury, who was in a dark place, for him, he never wants to go back to where he once was. So by him coaching people and helping them improve and empower themselves, he's not only doing something for them, he's also doing it for himself. What is your life like today? And I don't know all of what happened in your childhood, but it seems like you're living a pretty great life. Oh, it, you have a beautiful wife it, and two great kids. It, it's amazing. Uh, family is great. Family is really the true purpose behind why I do what I do. And it's really about teaching other fathers, other men, how to become great through health, through lifestyle, through fitness. And of course, what I call living your lasting legacy. All right, and uh, Shannon's giving us the rap sign. Let's Such go. a buzzkill, Shannon. Um, before we go, I want each of you guys to to leave people with your number one tip. I know you're real big on paleo, paleo eating. Um, what whatever you want to leave people with, and then where can people find you? Yeah, so my name is Luke Kayam, and I created a, a brand called the Fittest Tribe Alive, and it's really just about teaching people to go out and do something uncomfortable, become healthy through lifestyle practices, fitness, and nutrition, becoming a greater father, becoming a greater husband and taking as many people with you along the way. And I guess that one tip uh, of the day would be all of what Jesse says. Come on. That's, that's, my, that, that's my response after I wrap it up. What Luke said. Yeah, Jess, go ahead. Um, yeah, my name is Jesse Holland and uh, you, can, you can find me at uh, The Fittest Tribe Alive or you can find me at k2adventuretravel.com, um, either of those, and you can come and join me in a, uh, an adventure along with Luke. Um, health tips, you know, I think that we've dropped a couple here that are very important and let's just keep it simple. Really, it's just about getting things started. And as we come into the new year, it's really about not waiting, um, starting today and make those steps very small and achievable so that they last throughout the new year and then dial things in progressively. Do you guys think that paleo is sort of the, the best way to go in terms of eating? So I'm going to use the term practically paleo because I've been prescribing that for so long, but I've seen people eat beef jerky uh, in between flossing and brushing their teeth. So <laughs> <laughs> Meat is not all it. Uh, I believe in plant-based whole foods. I believe in balance. 
you know, for as much protein as you want to eat, you want to combine that with equal amounts of, of green leafy vegetables. So uh, I'm a less is more guy now, you know, almost hitting 40 here in my, in my old age with these gray and white uh, beard hairs. <laughs> so it's all about longevity and strictly paleo is not uh, a recipe for longevity, but those guidelines are. So eliminating any kind of wheat, any kind of dairy uh, and any processed foods and refined sugars. And what about uh, if some people want to jump start what they're doing? Do you recommend like a cleanse or anything sort of extreme? like that? No, it's too dramatic. I recommend uh, eliminating two things from what they're eating right now. So if they're having pizza and Coca-Cola, then those would be the two things I would eliminate. And then slowly over time, we start to eliminate more and more toxins from their body. All right, gents. Thanks to both of you for being here. Thank you so much for having us, Carrie. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jesse, Shannon. you kind of have like a Barry White voice. Anyone <laughs> ever told you that? Absolutely. Comes <laughs> Thanks for listening and watching Carrie Benya Reports, everyone. We appreciate having you with us. And you can always connect with us at inspiredmedia360.com, where we post new interviews and shows and lots of content every week. Uh, today's show produced and engineered by Shannon Hernandez, brought to you by Inspired Media 360. Until next time, stay inspired.